Good morning again. Now at this time, let's open our Bibles to the book of Colossians. And today we are looking at the book of Colossians chapter 3, and we are looking at verse 22. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 3, verse 22. When you found it, let us all rise together in reverence for God and his word. This is the word of our God. Bondservants, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. This is God's word. May God bless you with his word. This verse is critical for us, helpful for us in understanding how we ought to live our lives, how we should work, and how we should work hard. And this is something I hope that you will learn, especially as a young person, that you will learn the value of hard work. When you work hard, you know, it doesn't always pay off right away. But sometimes we need to be persistent, we need to be diligent, we need to learn how to work hard. Now obviously this verse is addressed to bond servants. And at this time, we don't have in our context slavery or those kind of institutions. But don't get this confused in thinking it's similar to slavery as it was in America. It's not. It was a type of work, a way that the poorest of the poor could find work and actually have food and survive. It was more, I guess, it would be similar perhaps to something like an indentured servant, if you've ever studied that in history. And that's something where we don't really have that today, yet at the same time, it's very instructive for us, it's helpful for us to know how we ought to work. And so, the first thing I want us to be able to see is the one basic attitude that we need to avoid is first, what it means to have eye service, right? That you're simply working. One thing we could see is just because there are people watching you, there's someone who is observing if you knew someone was watching you while you were working, does it change how you perform? If your boss was passing by, do you suddenly have to switch your screen and your monitor? If your parents walk into your room, do you suddenly change your screen to look as if you are productive, as if you are working and not playing some games? This is eye service. It's working only when others are watching you. And Paul is saying, don't do this. Don't work just simply for eye service. Just pretending you are productive. This is not honoring to God at all. You see, this is where we're supposed to see perhaps one thing that the, the pandemic has shown us. I think for many of you, the pandemic has shown you just how productive you can be on your own. That when, when you're working from home or when you are watching uh, or studying for, from home, how productive can you be? Well, one thing I think we know is Maybe we need to learn from what Paul is saying here today about eye service. Another way that we often get affected by eye service is we simply work for the acceptance of these people, right? We, we want to be successful. We want to perform. We want to get a good rating if you're going through a review or if you're being put up for 
maybe a promotion or for a raise. And sometimes you only work just for these kinds of appearances, these awards. And basically, it is just to be accepted by men, by women, by your you know, co-workers. And these perceptions control you. It controls how you work, how you act, how you dress. Now, one of the things that you could see is that this is a form of what we would describe as the fear of man. The Bible tells us that the fear of man is something that we need to avoid. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25 warns us, the fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. And the answer to the fear of man, if you were to study the Old Testament and Proverbs in particular, you would know that the answer to the fear of man is the fear of the Lord, that you would fear God. And this is actually what Paul is describing when he's, descri when he's talking about people pleasing. This doesn't just apply to our work. You see, the fear of man, actually, it, it changes the way we often live. For example, are you controlled by what you perceive other people are perceiving about you? How much does it affect you about what other people think about you or what you think other people think about you? Does it affect how you buy things? The kinds of clothes that you wear? your social life, or your social media, your, even your hairstyle, does it change just simply because you want to fit in with everyone? You just simply want to be liked. You want to be loved. Because you really care about what other people think about you and look at you. You see, if you want to understand the fear of man, we should kind of learn where it all began. And the Bible actually shows us where the fear of man can be first illustrated. It's in Genesis chapter 3, when Adam and Eve had sinned. I believe that's the first example of when you see the fear of man being illustrated. You see, Adam and Eve had sinned. And when they sinned, the eyes of Adam and Eve were opened, it says. The Bible says in Genesis 3, 7. Now, what was it open to? Can they see new colors? No. Are they able to see God better than they were before? What they saw was their own nakedness. They saw themselves and they were ashamed. So one of the things that you'll see the fear of man induces in people is this feeling of shame. This feeling of others looking at you and what you think others see. This was not how it was supposed to be. Adam and Eve were husband and wife. They should have been comfortable. Who are they afraid of is looking at them. The rabbits? They were afraid. And they hid. But this is where we see, even more than just being husband and wife, they should not have been ashamed because they were made in the image of God. 
And being made in the image of God, they should have been proud. They should have been comfortable. But sin causes them to feel this sense of shame. And it caused them to be separated from one another because they started to see each other with suspicion. And they felt the need to cover themselves in a flawed and failed way. But you see, this is exactly what happens to us when we are being controlled by the fear of man. What you think about yourself might be controlled by what others think. And it's so sad because you often hear young people taking their lives just simply because of what was being said about them or what was happening online and talking about them. And for some reason, you have young people who are willing to take their life because they feel their life is ruined, totally destroyed, just because of the opinions of others. And so what do we do? We cover ourselves. We put up masks. We put up an appearance. And one of the things I think that many young people are afraid of deathly afraid of is being found fake. That you are fake and all your friends think you are fake and you're exposed. That your life is exposed. That if you were, your shame was exposed, many of you would just crumble. You see, this is the problem with the fear of man. It causes us to want to hide. Just as Adam and Eve hid from God, they wanted to hide, and so do we. And there's a shame that we have because we don't feel attractive. We don't feel accepted by our friends, and it makes us unhappy. But if you were to understand what the Bible is showing us, it's deeper than that. It's not just a shame because of how attractive you are or unattractive you are or how likable you are or not likable, but actually the shame is the result of sin. And this becomes obvious, especially when you have sin, and you know people are going to find it out. Sometimes your sins make you feel so guilty. It's as if everyone can see this sin. It's like that short story, The Telltale Heart. Constantly beating was this heart. Was it the heart of the person who was murdered or the murderer? but you actually see this sadly manifested even more when you are also being sinned against. Sadly, there are people who are abused, whether it be physically, verbally, mentally, emotionally, sexually, and this sense of shame becomes magnified. When you are abused verbally and you, are, you feel like nothing, and when people look at you, you feel so much more this sense of shame, and it's magnified, it's intensified, and you want to hide even more because you feel like the darkness that is in you, the darkness that is you, is horrible, and you want to hide it from everyone because you're afraid of people knowing the real you because they would judge you, they might hate you or reject you if it was really you. So we put up these masks. 
But Paul tells us here. And the Bible tells us constantly the answer to the fear of man is the fear of God. The fear of man sees with suspicion and it wants to hide. It wants to cover itself with as many layers and masks as many ways of trying to look good, as many fig leaves as they can. It's this principle of self-justification, of a self-righteousness, that you try and you try to make yourself acceptable, whether it be to God or whether it be to man. But it is a empty, an empty exercise. It's useless. It's meaningless. So what, which, what must we do? You see, instead, God calls out to you. Just as God called out to Adam and Eve in the garden, God calls out to you. Is it because God didn't know where they were? Did God really not know where are you? No, that's not the reason. It's so that they would turn. They would come to him. It is a call to repentance. God is calling out to you. And the proper response is that instead of hiding ourselves, we now have to open our hearts. And this is a very scary thing. If you've ever really tried to open up your heart to God, if you've ever really tried to open up and show Him all of your failures, all of your sins, it is terrifying because some of you are terrified that God will see what he sees and he will not like you. He will reject you. But that is not true. We have to face these things and be completely exposed because this is the cure of justification. You see, we need to come to God just as we are, as helpless and hopeless sinners, in order that Christ would wash us of our sins and cleanse us, that he would cover us with his righteousness, and that when God covers our shame, we would no longer need to hide from him and his holy gaze. We could stand before God because the righteousness of Christ is enough. That when Jesus washes you of your sins, it is enough. It transforms our fear of being seen because Christ transforms our darkness into light. Sometimes that darkness is because of your sin that you've sinned. Sometimes it feels like that darkness is there because of the weight of other people's sins who've sinned against you. But we cannot continue to hide from the light of the world. He will transform our sorrows, our shame. No longer are we supposed to hide from the one who was crucified for us. You see, when Christ was crucified, he had to bear all our shame. Now, you might think that that was simply because he was 
stripped naked and bare. Now, if you think about this, Jesus Christ, when he was hanging on a cross and they stripped him, they beat him, they were spitting on him, truly he was humiliated as much as humanly possible. But you have to understand that when Jesus Christ died for our sins, he bore the weight of our guilt before God. And all of our Shame he bore. All of our sins he bore. All of our sorrows, all of your sadness, he bore it on the cross. Every single one so that you could be healed. So that he would be made naked completely bare, emptied of the Spirit, so that you would be covered, that you would be filled, that you would be filled with the Spirit of God, you would be filled with eternal life, that no longer will you need to hide. This is what Christ has done in order to take you from darkness and bring you to his light. But this is a test I want you to think of. Are you controlled by the fear of man or are you controlled by the fear of the Lord? There's a simple test, I think. What challenges you to make different decisions? Are you more afraid of doing what is wrong in front of other people? Or are you more afraid of doing what is wrong before God? Are you afraid of being rejected by people, that you act a certain way because you don't want to be rejected by people, you want to be liked by them? Or are you afraid, you fear the Lord, that you refuse to sin? That even when no one is watching you and you are by yourself, you will honor your father and your mother because you fear the Lord. That when you're working, you stop goofing off and you do what you're supposed to Because you fear the Lord. You see, the fear of the Lord is what should drive you. It should mold you. It should cause you to live a life that is pleasing to God. Rather than simply trying to please other people. This is how you live. Not in the way of eye service, pleasing people, but with sincerity of heart, with a clear conscience, because you fear the Lord. Proverbs 29, 23. The fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. Proverbs 14, 27. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life that one may turn away from the snares of death. Dear friends, no longer are you meant to live in just pleasing other people, pleasing yourselves even, whether it be pleasing your parents, Pleasing your boss or your manager, pleasing your friends, that's not why we're meant to live. You work hard because you want to please the Lord. You honor your father and your mother because you know it's pleasing to the Lord. You do all that you do because that is what you want to do, that Christ 
is the one you want to please. Let us pray.